So uh, I guess I'll get started. Yeah, uh, just, a, just a quick uh, short in introduction of myself. So, yeah, so my name is Rambo. I, I work at Google mostly building uh, frameworks that takes external facing traffic and then to our Google's own internal services. You know, in the past, uh, mostly those traffic is web traffic and then mobile. Nowadays, there's a lot of like API traffic. For example, if you're running VMs uh, on the GCP VMs, we have a big table pops up, you know, span those kind of APIs. The transport also has involved. In the past, it was all HTTP, you know, web. Now, nowadays, we also have gRPC traffic, uh, which is the sort of default transport. Uh, my experience with uh, serverless is pretty limited. I, mo you know, I sort of get most of the concepts of serverless from the time I actually worked on the App Engine. Back then, I remember it's more than t 10 years ago, I was doing, a, I was trying to open source Google's internal server engines. I worked really hard day and night, so we don't have to use Jetty. We end up still using Jetty. Uh, it turns out to be good. But yeah, anyway, so, so today, the topic I'm gonna talk about is mostly just a, a concept. I try to you know, start with a problem definition and then try to explore the concept. Uh, I think this is an important concept for serverless. And when I first heard about serverless, you know, all these functions, lambdas, I would think, okay, good. They, they got to have to solve this problem in some way. Uh, so I'm excited to be here. Uh, the purpose for, for me is mostly, you know, I want to talk to you guys, especially after this talk, if you have any thoughts. Uh, if you know, agree or disagree with whatever, you know, I, I stated, please let me know. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can come up with something. It's either, you know, keep evolving the ideas, discussion, or maybe build something together. Uh, I have built a lot of those things, sort of related technologies in the past, uh, not specific for serverless, uh, but I think it's, like I said, it's a very relevant uh, topic. So let's get started. Uh, the overall topic is very simple, right? It's just about a state for communication. And, uh, but serverless makes it even more complicated, uh, even more sort of eminent, right? So the serverless functions, I guess, uh, for example, Evan talked about today, you know, it's, uh, most, for the most part, you will assume it's a stateless function. So at least when it's actually stateless, it's, uh, it just works a lot better. Uh, so, so this overall thing is really just about how do we handle state of communication uh, in today's kind of serverless environment. Uh, I'll try to have a definition, sort of my definition of what are the sort of state of kind server communication is actually is. Uh, to me, it's really about you're trying to do like a TCP socket. Right, you basically open a socket from the client to the server, and sure, you would do some message, uh, you know, framing to send the messages in, instead of bytes uh, between the client and the server, but uh, for the most part, the semantics is, uh, is more or less the, the TCP socket semantics. And the typical example is, you know, you, you have BADA APIs, web sockets, you know, gRPC streamings, those kind of things. Now, the difference between this kind of state for communication and the traditional, like, a single request response RPC is, uh, so first, you know, the TCP semantics, right, still there. So it's a FIFO based, full duplex, which means that a client and a server can stream in data to each other uh, in parallel. And the delivery is in order, right, because it's a TCP socket, so you can assume that it's all the messages will be delivered uh, in a FIFO order. Now, the, the biggest difference here is uh, there's no causality sort of semantics. Request response, you know, the response is generated because of the request, right? So this is a very strong uh, semantics. And in the streaming case, not necessary, right? You may have a server push, which is spontaneous messages from the server. And you can also have one-way messages from either end. So in that case, you know, the message the client sender versus the message server sender, they may or may not correlate. Uh, I'll talk about why this is important. So there are case that is, you know, state for communication like this actually works, works okay. Uh, especially when there is actually some kind of causality between the data the client send and the, da the data the server generate. The second sort of property for this to work well is, you know, the, the data, basically there's a streaming. It's a streaming, it's like, you know, there's, a, there's incremental delivery. Basically there's not a, like idle, like there's not a time or idle intervals when the server or the client just do nothing, right? So the data keep coming. And uh, the last part is short-lived. You know, I mean, obviously, you know, what, what, you know, quantitatively what that means, it's up, up to define. But typical, I guess, 60 seconds could be, you know, you, you may see this as sort of upper bound. The, the canonical case for this, that follows this definition is, you know, what I would call media transcoding. It doesn't have to be actual media, like a video, audio files. But the concept is you, you, you upload some data 
and then you, the, you have a download. The, the upload and download may happen at the same time. Uh, that's what we call full duplex. And it's short lived, you know, there's a bond, there's a time boundary when the, all the data gets uploaded and then the data gets uh, downloaded, right? Well, one thing you can imagine is you're building a, a video transcoding. You don't want the server to wait until all the data get, uh, you know, gets as received as start, and then to start to process and return to the, to the client. Let's say that's a real time transcoding service. So this is a canonical case, which I believe that it works well. You know, you can basically just like RPC, it's, uh, so their case study is, I think, you know, this kind of, you know, long-lived streaming uh, kind of communication become problematic. Uh, I, would, I would argue, especially for serverless, right? So why is this kind of server push kind of uh, uh, traffic? Uh, in, in Google, we have this, in, you know, for example, called Firestore, we have this concept called Watch API. So this is for the client to observe changes happened on the database. Uh, another example is like, you know, any kind of collaborative adding, uh, editing uh, you can add it uh, like Google Docs or uh, the chat room. So all those things. Uh, the one thing is for the second part is they are typically long lived, right? There's no un until the client log off. Basically, the whole uh, communication stays on. So so yeah. So this is when actually uh, the you know this is what I actually define what I would call stateful by die streaming, right? So this is when become you know this whole sort of paradigm really shifted from the traditional sort of RPCs. And if you look at the diagram here, uh, it's very much like a socket. When in the RPC case, you can have proxies, they can, you know, you can have more than one proxies. The proxy and the proxy, you know, between the client and the server, there are a lot of proxies, they can, be, they can all operate to transparent to each other. So that's how you get all the scalability, uh, sort of the web scale scalability. Now, I want to sort of dive into a little bit of why uh, this is problematic, right? Even, you know, Contradictory to what you may think, the TCP is actually unreliable, right? You know, although the TCP does all this uh, sort of uh, loss recovery or that, but it's unreliable, which means that is, it can actually can be broken. And when it's broken, you actually don't know if the data has been delivered or not because there's no such thing like end to act or those things. And the second part is, you know, uh, failure detection, as you may know, it's impossible or, or very hard uh, on the internet. Uh, then the second part of challenge, uh, the challenges is mostly on the on the infra infrastructure side on the service, uh, for especially for the long live sessions. For the, on the client side, you can imagine if the client you know it's a mobile phone, you walk from one uh, from elevator, and then you switch to Wi-Fi, right? The MAC address, IP address all changed. And also the proxy, they all have problem with deal with that, and the proxy itself may get restarted. On the server side, you have all these load balancing, DOS security issues and uh, to deal with the long live sessions. And uh, you know, serverless, if effectively you have to solve this problem. And, and uh, that challenge is no different, I guess, than, uh, than the, the sort of the, the non-serverless environment. However, the streaming is important to have, to support, especially if you want to have the very efficient, late, like a very low light latency and a very high efficiency. Because what streaming really gives you is this kind of sort of batching effect, right? And on the latency side, you can really save the one RTT. So I have some numbers I show you, you know, you can sort of give you an idea what RTT really means. It depends on, if you, if you consider speed, uh, speed of light is a factor. Uh, at the HTTP level, you're really looking at like a 10x or uh, even higher, right? So you can, you can calculate like, you know, I remember uh, uh, in this morning, someone was talking about 10 milliseconds. So 10 milliseconds, so the typical latency between US East Coast and uh, West Coast uh, could be like a much higher, right? It can be up to uh, 100 milliseconds. So having something like streaming is really important uh, for the, from the application or from the end user point of view. The second one is that there's also effic efficiency uh, effect because you know, with streaming, you don't have to do all this. But you basically have this kind of cross-layer batching, basically. especially you, you, don't, you don't have to do the authorization or auth. You can only do it once. I mean, that itself has security issues, but, but generally there's, uh, you know, because uh, you can skip a lot of uh, sort of initialization cost, so there's a saving on CPU as well. So, so now we know that is, you know, so the, where the problem, what are the, exactly the problem is, and uh, why, you know, why streaming is, uh, why those kind of state, state of communication is problematic, but at the same time it's useful. So I want to just provide a sort of 
a higher level abstraction. You know what exactly that means. <coughs> Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of you probably already look at like WebSockets API. I personally was also part of this original, you know, standardization effort. I mean, it's a very simple concept, right? You open a, uh, you open a so-called session uh, that can be a web channel, can be anything uh, against the URL. Then you can send a message, you can get a message, and then you close it. It's a very simple abstraction. Uh, the only thing that's implicit, from, you know, not obvious from the API is that's also FIFO in order and the uh, delivery there. <coughs> now this is all works fine until suddenly the network uh, sort of bro breaks, right? Then you, you basically have a problem, like how do I recover? How do I even know the message gets sent? <laughs> so the state of art, to my knowledge, is you basically sort of try to solve this problem, limit, uh, limit to support streaming, uh, with one of the two sort of approaches. One is you kind of just limited the, the sessions to, to a short period. Because we, if, you know, if the session is limited to like 60 seconds, and for the most part, you can ignore a lot of those problems, and you can just treat them as RPC. The second one is basically you try not to do streaming at all, you, instead of using out-of-band push. Uh, so in Google, you know, we have this sort of, uh, uh, now it's called Firebase, uh, Cloud messaging service, right? So we can deliver messages out of band, and the basic, and then you basically say, you know, kind of will only do RPC, but when they want to get data, uh, they will get from a, a, a different channel, which is not where the server application or your function is actually running. Uh, so basically, there's a third, a, another party introduced, right? So which is responsible for delivering message, delivering messages, uh, and. Uh, so for the past few years, I've been working on something different. It's different than the, you know, these other two solutions. Uh, so we have a GitHub on the Bida web. This doesn't really have a solution there. It doesn't have uh, actual solution that you can use, but it mostly publishes a bunch of uh, specs, surveys, and uh, also some discussions or APIs to sort of try to uh, define this, try to come up with the solution is, you know, between the client and the server, uh, you have this sort of, uh, you have a logical session, uh, but on end of the hood, where end of the hood, you're basically using a short and concurrent RPCs, which is HTTP based. So this all works fine. This solves a lot of problems, uh, like all the proxy problems, scalabi scalability problems, uh, on the client side, all this you know, mobility problems, but it doesn't really work for serverless because in this model, the server endpoints is still long-lived uh, stateful. So the question is, now can we have both, right? So instead of has these symmetric solutions, you have client actually see a permanent byte session. It's like, you know, I'm holding a WebSockets endpoint, something like that. But on the server side, it's just a bunch of uh, stateless functions. So this is something I, you know, to my knowledge, it doesn't, doesn't exist, but I think there's uh, value to build that. So the, so the next part of this talk is I'm just going to go through a quick uh, sort of case study. Saying, imagine you want to build a, a real-time chat. Right? You, you know, it has to be real-time chat, which means that is if someone is typing, you can see literally the, the keyboard is moving and stuff like that. Uh, you know, I want to say how can we transform this, this kind of state of sort of traditional model uh, to a service model? Like what are the primitives we need to support that to make it work? So, so yeah, so this slide is just show you like how the traditional model will work, right? So you have a client, let's say a mobile phone or browsers, and then they talk to a server. Uh, the server has the endpoint. Between the client and the server, there's some kind of stateful uh, mess messaging service uh, going on there. It can be web sockets, it can be gRPC, or it can be something at a higher level. Uh, but again, the communication by nature is stateful. And then on the server side, you know, you have all this sort of the backend storage uh, to managing the so-called you know, chat room uh, communication. This is all the backend stuff. For, in there, you can use Q, you know, all these uh, database databases. <coughs> now, the, at the very, very high level, what I, you know, what I want to achieve is this model. Right? Instead of now you have a bunch of clients, they know that they're talking to a streaming API, which is you know, to build this real-time chat. Real-time chat can be really abstract as a very simple API. It's just like a shared state, uh, state machine kind of model, right? 
And then on the server side, you have a lot of functions. Obviously, the state has to be there, so you assume there's a, a in-memory store, and of, of course, then you know, all the all the all the clients have to talk to each other. So there's some kind of messaging service has to be there. But otherwise, all the so-called application logic, the so-called chat logic, will be implemented as those functions or the APIs. So, uh, so I'm going. How much time I have? Oh, 15 minutes, okay. So I'm just going to uh, go, go through the, all the primitives, uh, primitives quickly, right? So this is just, uh, I think this is sort of the real, th this is what I think that is, you know, maybe service community as a whole can come up with uh, sort of a standard way to do that. And that's generous, uh, you know, it's generalized enough that can support a variety of applications that kind of follow in this model, right? They're, they're by die they are state for communication, uh, they're long-lived. And, uh, and also it's harder to use a push service out of band because the functions have, doesn't have a business logic that doesn't need to know, you know when to process a message and when messages has to be act, stuff like that. <coughs> so, so the first abstraction or first uh, sort of primitive is basically the concept of like, you know, how do you actually even start a session, right? The, the functions, remember the functions are stateless. So uh, the client has to, the client, assume the client has a framework uh, which has a library which will generate all those messages. So the first one is basically yeah, the concept of uh, you need to have a, a way to create a session. And the session has to be addressable, right? And you know, the concept of some kind of uh, session ID. That session ID will be also passed back to the client. <coughs> the second primitive is like how do you deliver a new message to the client? Uh, uh, how to deliver a new message from the client? Right. What, what, you know, what is the underlying semantics involved? Again, uh, assume there's some kind of in-memory store behind those functions. Uh, so here's what I just defined. Right. So the send from the client will be transformed to some kind of log messages. And, uh, and then there's the act, they'll come back. <coughs> So this is again uh, saying that is you know how to how to yeah I guess a typo. So this is like how for the how does how to generate a message back to the client when you know the first of the client send the messages right let's say from one client against the same chat room and then how do you like send a message back to the client like what what are the functions involved. So this is basically how do you generate, uh, deliver server messages, yeah. So this is how to generate server messages from the so-called sessions. So, so the, on the left side is the concept of the, the session store and how does the session store pu push your messages uh, to, the, to the client. And this is sort of the how and, uh, everything works into. I guess uh, you know this a little bit more details there, uh, and also depend on how you implement that. But the concept is the, the, you know this concept is server session on the server side, and how do you actually send the messages uh, that to the client back to the client, right? How the whole end-to-end -end loop, how this works. So this is sort of concluded the the basic primitive, right? You create a session, you, you, you have a way to. Uh, for the client to send the messages, and then you also have a way for the server to send the messages back to the client. And uh, uh, in this case, because it's the concept there's a push, uh, I have this concept of this called framework function, which means I still function, but it's not implemented as by the application. It doesn't really contain the so-called business logic. <coughs> so to summarize, you basically look at something like that, right? So there's a concept of session and which on the client side, you know, it's very, very straightforward uh, kind of APIs, but on the, on the server side, for all the, in the serverless environment, you break down them to individual service, uh, individual stateless functions. Uh, but there are, there are definite complexities. Uh, I mean, those, perf those like primitives looks very simple, but really to make it work, you have to solve a lot of sort of harder communication problems, like how do you ensure the message ordering? Uh, because the message can come, you know, imagine uh, the communication 
is done either on the client side or on the server side, and they may not agree with each other, right? And some infrared messages can still be delivered when the new message gets retried, stuff like that. And then how do you recover from a failure from either end? How do you ensure uh, the end-to-end -end echo works? And also even more complicated, yeah, how the flow can treatment works. Right? Flow can treatment is a concept of when, when you do state of communication, you want to have a way to push back to the peer saying slow down. <coughs> Uh, yeah, so, so you know, look at it, it's obviously it's not straightforward. First is on the, for, for, for the developers to implement those functions, it's, not a, it's definitely not as straightforward as, uh, as just implementing a WebSocket standpoint. Uh, so I guess the question is, yeah, why do we have to go through all the trouble? Maybe we should just go with this, um, the kernel model, like using a push service. Uh, I think the, the problem I, I'm seeing with uh, using a push service compared to you know, application, or in this case, functions actually own and implement the endpoint on the server side is basically uh, uh, like two problems, right? One is the, the push service typically has the actual latency and uh, there's a cost as well. Second is they're not as flexible as what you would want the application to do. Uh, they have a pretty strict, like predefined ordering semantics, like you know, is how messages totally ordered. You know, what happens if there's a message gaps? Do you really support exactly once or you know at most once kind of deliveries? Uh, I I'm not aware of you know a messaging service will allows you to really uh, deal with a lot of sort of application defined semantics. Uh, the other one is, you know, is you kind of you can imagine that as you know, in the future, if you want to do like a virtual reality based chat, you have this really low level overhead storage kind of services. It's going to be because the throughput is going to be so high, the number of you know the message rates will be so high. It's hard to imagine try to sort of uh, offload all those communication to a to a to a to a centralized service. So I think I think you know this sort of. So this is sort of the, the motivation, I think, that is develop a stateless solution for serverless, uh, having the application actually on the stateful endpoint uh, in, in, in the form of the serverless functions plus uh, in-memory store, I think it's very useful. Uh, so I would, uh, you know, I don't know, I mean, you, you get all the, all the things I want to propose, but really I think that is, there's a, uh, there is a pretty interesting or hard problem to solve here, which is how to do stateful communication uh, against the ser stateless serverless uh, functions, and how do you scale, how do you make it actual work from an application standpoint of view. I, I do think that is, you know, for this to work, you definitely need some kind of framework support on the, on the server side. You can't just have the application or the functions to handle all, all those message semantics by themselves. So now the question is how do you, define those frameworks and also define those primitives in a way that's, that's as transparent as possible for the functions, right? So that they can focus on the business logic instead of dealing with all these sort of communication problems. So I'd like to hear what do you think about this? You know, is this really a problem when you solve? And maybe there's already other attempts to solve the similar problem or, you know, how well I'm defining this problem. Uh, if, yeah, you, you can talk to me after, after this or you can ask question now. Also, you know, uh, my email is pretty easy to remember. It's called webhandsgroup.com. So send me an email if you want to discuss more. I am very interested in collaborating with anyone uh, that are interested in solving this problem as a, as a, in a general way for developers. Okay, thanks. All right, any questions? Can you elaborate a little bit more about the status behind that? Is that something Google is trying to work on, has been working on, trying to standardize? Uh, yeah, sounds good. Uh, so, so Google has been trying to solve this problem for their sort of our own internal infrastructure to support application like, you know, chat, docs, uh, more than like a file store, those things. Uh, I don't think we have a, a solution like this for. Uh, what they call cloud run. Uh, I also don't think App Engine, I mean, App Engine basically using a push service. Uh, in terms of uh, making this a spec, yeah, I think that's my goal. I think there are a lot of spec sort of focus on the transport side, not so much on in terms of primitive architecture and also make those things uh, agnostic to the actual transport or even the long time. Uh, right. Hi. Um 
don't, don't take this the wrong way. <laughs> um, it feels a lot in the serverless space like a s solution looking for a problem, what you're presenting here, because it feels like we already have eventing, which will allow you know, sort of asynchronous communications and connecting different pieces. And if you ever needed um, you know, a connection that would survive, then use something else. I mean, you don't have to necessarily use serverless. So am I, am I missing something? It feels like it's an interesting solution, but not for the serverless space. Right, yeah, I guess, yeah. So that's a good, I guess, feedback, right? I guess I, that's why I want to talk here from you guys. Does a serverless really have to solve this problem and also solve this problem in this way? Uh, maybe there's yeah, other solutions. But, you know, it's not a question, I guess, so I don't have an answer for that. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, part question, part. I, I do think we've definitely heard a lot of feedback from, from Azure Functions customers wanting more stateful patterns. Uh, I was going to send you an email, but I guess the only question I have is you emphasize a lot in memory, and I don't know if you really mean in memory or you just mean state. The other one is shameless plug. I'd be interested to get your thoughts on durable entities and some of the durable function stateful right. stuff that we've been working on as right. well around some of these stateful serverless patterns. Okay, yeah, uh, so I, it doesn't have to be in memory. It just, uh, it's, it's all about latency, right? So if the latency, if you put a, on a flash or disk, it still can't be the latency, that's less, something like a less than one millisecond, it doesn't have to be. Uh, yeah, I certainly think things like workflow, durable thing, that inherently also have a, also state you have to maintain. Uh, I think they, those are better understood problem. Uh, has a predefined sort of pattern or template. I think uh, overall it's a better solution uh, for what I try to solve. But you know, if you can build a chat app using a flow, define all this workflow or, or durable pattern, uh, I, don't, I, don't want, <laughs> I don't hear about that. Uh, so I think both are uh, you know, complementary, uh, but that's just my thought, yeah. All right, well, time for one more question. Oh. But yeah, please send me uh, emails about any technology solutions you have, yeah. Uh, since the Azure guys did a shameless plug, I'll do a shameless plug too. Uh, have you taken a look at Cloud State, which is um, building on Arca to allow these very low latency communication, not going to a backend memory store, but actually putting the, uh, the proxies in front to be able to manage that communication and state coordination. Right, I was thinking about that. Are you, yeah, so I think the second talk today touched based about that, the streaming using a proxy for the open whiskey. Uh, yeah, please send, a, send me an email, you know, so we can keep the discussion. Okay. Uh, I'm very focused on sort of the sort of Google scale infrastructure, but it's mostly internal, so I'm not really aware of all the sort of state of art uh, in the open source service world, but I'm really excited to hear about this. Okay, thanks.